It's the launch of season five of this podcast, and in this episode, I'm announcing some updates to the show. Plus, I'll push you to explore your why in a new way by looking at how the small purposes add up to a bigger purpose. And I'll talk about a resource that can help you get through a season of waiting. Oh yeah, and a new book club where you can discuss that resource. Okay, it's packed full of stuff, so let's not waste time. You're listening to Life Repurposed, where you'll find practical biblical wisdom for everyday living, creative inspiration, and helpful resources. Grow your faith, improve your relationships, discover your purpose, and reach your goals with topics to encourage you to find hope amid the trashy stuff of life. Thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Michelle Rayburn. This is the start of Season 5 of the Life Repurposed Podcast. In this season, you'll find a new cover image and a new look for the social posts. So if you're viewing this on your phone, you're going to see something that looks a little bit different than it did before. There's also an updated format to the show notes to help you find the most important nuggets of wisdom, plus each episode will have a full transcript in the show notes from now on. I've been recording with the upcoming guests and I'm excited to share the lineup with you. Plus, every other week I'll be here with a solo episode with practical stuff to challenge you to embrace a repurposed life. So similar to the format we've had, but for sure I'll be here every other week. Last season, there were so many guests from the Life Repurposed book that I did a lot more guest interviews just to pack them all in. And we didn't even get to everybody. I only was able to record some interviews with authors in the Life Repurposed book. maybe some of them will pop up here and there as we get into the next season. We're kicking off this year and this season with a question. Why? Yeah, really, the question is why. And no, it's not the Nancy Kerrigan, why, why, from the January 1994 Olympics. Okay, I'm dating myself here. It was the Olympic skating moment heard around the world, okay? I'm talking more about the toddler kind of why, which is even more fun. You know, the one where they want to know the reason behind everything and they ask why, why? Are you ready to channel your inner toddler? You should be asking why. (laughs) When we start a new year, it's typical to think of plans and goals. But before that, I want you to practice the habit of putting why behind everything. We could make a lot of goals and a lot of plans and think we have a purpose, but if we haven't asked why, then we haven't started with the right thing. So what if you asked why after every decision or plan that you made? I want to write a book. Why? I think I'll go back to school. Why? I'd love to go to Europe. Why? Let's have cereal for supper. Why? I'd like to lose 50 pounds. Why? Well, actually, that one's easy. I've been having cereal for supper every night. Okay, just kidding. We eat real suppers. But seriously, ask yourself why you want to lose weight. What's your reason? I want to read 30 books this year. Why? I think we should trade in our car. Why? Let's get a puppy. Why? Okay, you get the idea. One of the most quoted TED Talks that I've heard mentioned is that of Simon Sinek's Start With Why. He's also got a book on that. It's almost become cliche, and we start to tune it out, I think. Countless business people or writers have led their presentations on goals with this well-worn advice, and they quote Sinek as if it's revolutionary. Now, if you just did something and quoted him, I mean, I'm kind of quoting him right now too, but if you've just done something and quoted him, it's okay. But that question has been asked so many times. Let's take a new approach to it, okay? I want to know why start with why. If you tell me to start with why, my question is why. Okay, so I've thought about this a little bit. Like, why should we know our why? Well, first, I've discovered that it helps me to know where I'm going. So if I ask why, then I can establish a direction. I think it gives us focus from distractions because if I ask why I'm going to accept this challenge or this commitment or whatever is coming before me, if I ask why first, it keeps me from getting distracted for what I'm supposed to do. It also stops you from making decisions you might later regret. Remember the puppy question? Yes. 
because it's cute is not a good enough reason on your why on why to have a puppy. You really have to think about it. I know they're cute and cozy and and I I know the dog lovers out here are like, what is wrong with you, girl? You need to get a puppy. But I also know that I, my answer is no <laughs> on the puppy just because of the time commitment and all that goes into it. And so if it's like something that's going to bring joy to your family, then you have a better why than what I have. So sometimes those questions we ask are important or we might regret our decisions. Another reason for asking why is that it keeps you going when it's difficult and you want to quit. It's like I know my purpose. It's my motivation. So if I'm thinking about that, it's going to help me to get through some really tough stuff. And and when I'm coming to a standstill and not seeing progress, knowing my why helps me keep going. One last thing just for my observations is that your why doesn't only motivate the big goal, but it motivates the decisions along the way. So knowing the big long-term vision is one thing, but each little decision, I can ask myself why, and essentially that's asking, does this move me toward that goal at all? Or is this decision taking me in the wrong direction? Now, I also want to address the idea that your why isn't always positive or your best life scenario. For example, you might stick with a job you don't like because your why is a paycheck or security or familiarity or benefits or something you really need right now. So this is not like pie in the sky, big dreams. This is also sometimes my why for perhaps not going to college right now is I need to save the money first. Or my why for not accepting this promotion is I'm caring for a family member. And so it's not always like this big long-term dream thing, but our why is something that helps us to know the purpose behind what is happening in this season right now. So not every why is soul nurturing and inspiring, but it still helps to know the purpose behind each action. I want you to imagine if Jesus didn't know his why for being on earth. He was so focused on that. In Luke 4, it tells of how the devil tried to tempt Jesus in a moment of hunger and exhaustion. And Jesus knew his why. Right there in that passage, it follows up the temptation scenario with this passage that Jesus says. And he quotes it from Isaiah. And he he talks about his why. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He knew why he was on earth. It's why several years after this, he didn't fight the cross. He knew it was his purpose. So as you think about the whole year in front of you, what is your why? What would you do even if it didn't provide any income because it provided something else that fulfills you? What would you stop doing because you can't explain why you do it? In upcoming episodes, we'll have some guests who are talking about purpose and goals and finding your ideal life. So we'll cover those more in the future. But for today, let's put why on the end of everything we do. Let's be that little three-year-old who's asking the questions. And rather than focusing on the big why, let's look at how the little whys affect us. Why am I buying this? Why am I using my time this way? Why am I eating chocolate right now? Why does that person rile me up so much? Why do I want to change? Why is the milk sitting out on the counter again? Okay, maybe not that kind of why. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor, God's Grin Gale. Are you still sorting out your New Year goals? Or maybe you had good intentions, but have already gotten off track. Kathy Carlton Willis has two new books ready to equip you with your next steps. If you set goals for weight loss or health, this is for you. Or maybe you set a self-care or spiritual growth goal, but need extra direction and ideas. Kathy's books are part self-help, part Bible study, and always heartwarming. Take a look at The Grin Gal's Guide to Wellbeing, Being Well in Body, Soul, and Spirit. Her ancillary product is equally valuable, the Grin Gals Planner for Well-Being, a 90-day habit tracker for being well in body, soul, and spirit. Kathy is also offering virtual well-being groups to provide extra help and support. To learn more, go to her website at kathycarltonwillis.com. 
kathycarltonwillis.com. That's kathycarltonwillis.com. She invites you to contact her for more details. I want to share a resource with you. We have a new book club in the Life Repurpose community on Facebook. And for the next six weeks, we're reading Wait and See, Finding Peace in God's Pauses and Plans by author Wendy Pope. It isn't too late to join the group, even though we started our reading plan. We just started this week, so you can still join us. You can pick up the ebook and catch up with us. You don't have to wait for your Amazon Prime order to come, or you can just pick it up next week and catch up with us. That's fine. I'll put a link in the show notes at michellerayburn.com slash 123, so that that's for episode 123. That way, if you want to, you can still join up with the book club. Now, you just have to join the, the Life Repurposed Facebook community. And there you'll find the info on the book club if you're not looking at the show notes or anything like that. This is for people who are part of the Life Repurposed community. So I want you to join the community first and participate in some of the discussion there as well. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the book, about uh, Wait and See, Finding Peace in God's Pauses and Plans. Every woman struggles with times of waiting for a spouse, a child, a job. In Wait and See, Wendy Pope guides readers to focus on the person of their faith rather than the object of their wait. The book draws on the story of King David, who was anointed king nearly 20 years before he took his throne. This hands-on guidebook invites readers to record their own waiting discoveries with practical suggestions and real-life stories. Wendy Pope shows readers how they can be active in the present as they hope for the future. If you're in a waiting pattern and you can't answer the why questions in your life, I encourage you to start here in the waiting. Now, we think of the new year as a time for launching new things and having brand new goals and being excited about all of those things. But it doesn't always start that way. Nothing magically resets from December to January if you're in the middle of a waiting pattern. So this is a great place to start, actually, even if you do know the direction you're going to be prepared for those waiting seasons that are sure to come. So this is a great place to start with this book. Wendy Pope has also been a guest on this podcast in the past, so I'll link to her episode in the show notes, and that way you can also listen to her talk. So how does the book club work? Well, it's a Facebook group, and the discussion will happen in themed threads each week. So no matter your time zone, you can join in by commenting and interacting with others. We're not like gathering on a video call or anything like that where you have to interact. There's no breakout discussions or anything like that. You can wear your jammies if you want. And well, you I suppose you could if you were on Zoom too, but you can you can wear your jammies and leave your video off and comment at any time of the day, just typing your comments in there. You'll be encouraged when you add your comments to also find someone else's to comment on and interact with. The show notes with that link are at michellerayburn.com slash 123. So you'll find that there and you can join up. I'm hoping to do additional books in the future as well. So if you aren't really interested in doing this one, join the Life Repurposed community and you'll be ready for when we make our next announcement for a book club. Another reason to join the Life Repurposed community on Facebook is that I'll be giving away a copy of the book Life Repurposed, Stories of Grace, Hope, and Restored Faith each month to one person who has a birthday in that month. So you'll have a choice between the print book or an audio book. I'm adding new discussion topics, resources, and live videos this year too. So why join the community? Because who doesn't need more encouragement unless politics or controversy right now? Those things are not going to be in the Life Repurposed community. And if they show up, I'm going to delete those posts. So this is a safe place for you to come and just have some time of relaxed discussion and growth with other people. Now, one more thing before you go. Do you need new phone wallpaper to remind yourself to stop and think of your why before you numb your mind with wasted phone time? I'm going to post a free download in the Life Repurposed community and you can grab that and then add that to your phone. Now, maybe you've never changed out your wallpaper and you're like, what? What is that? That's on your lock screen on your phone. And when you pick up your phone, Mine has grand pictures of my grandkids on there, but every so often I swap it out for something else. And if you're struggling with your why and you don't know why you keep on picking up your phone when you should be doing something else, 
I'm going to give you a wallpaper that says why, and it'll make you pause and think every time you pick up that phone. So that's going to be there in the Life Repurpose community on a post happening right after this show drops. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today, and I'll be back next week with another episode. Okay, I'm starting to feel like that sounds a little bit like Mr. Rogers, and I'll be back in a week or two, and I'll have more ideas for you. And we'll have, okay, that's enough of that. All right, I will be back in a week and I will have a guest and his name is Jerry Dugan. So please come back next week for the Life Repurposed Podcast. Thanks for being here. You've been listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn. Check out tips, resources, and inspiration at michellerayburn.com to get the show notes for this episode. Each week, I share links to everything mentioned in the episode, graphics you can share, and guest quotes. I also invite you to join the Life Repurposed Facebook community for weekly conversation with others on the journey of discovering the repurposed life. Before you go, which friend needs to hear this episode? Share a link with a note to invite them to listen. And thank you for listening too.